Welcome to the Ark this morning. We're so glad you're here. Wonder if you could stand with me. It is such a thrill to see everyone here today. So great to see Miss Joyce and Shannon. Yay! And the kids and their guests. We're so glad you are here. My Lord, we love you. And um, it's just good to have Jesus here this morning. I want to say happy birthday to Kenneth Martin here today. Yes. Happy birthday. It's great to you. Yes, amen. Amen. It is a joy to be in God's house today, is it not? Aren't you glad that he kept you this week? Amen. He is so good to us. So we're going to pray together. Would you pray with me? And um, lift your voice and ask God to, to finish what he started already in our pre-service prayer today. Amen. Jesus, God, this is your service here this morning. Lord, we thank you for your, your blessings. We thank you, God, for all the things that you've done for us this week. And I pray, Lord, today that you would finish, God, your work here in this service. Lord Jesus, do a mighty work. Do a quick work in us today. And let the supernatural presence of God fill this house the way it has already in our prayer service. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. Now, I want you to worship with us. I want you to use those instruments he gave you right here. Amen. All right. Go ahead and clap. We don't care if you clap off beat. It's okay. We don't mind. All right. You moved the mountains. You told the wind and waves be still. You cast out demons. Yes, you did. You bid the empty souls be filled. And now there's breakthrough. And now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power. And the keys to do the same. You crushed the darkness. You made a fool of death and grave. Oh, King Jesus. You make royals out of slaves. And now there's breakthrough. And now there's freedom in your name. The keys to do the same. 
your victory. We stand in authority. It's okay. Through your mask or whatever. Amen. We were talking about this this morning. How many of y'all remember? You probably, some of y'all are young. You wouldn't remember this. But there used to be a thing called the party line telephone. When you got telephones, there was party lines. And you would have to wait on somebody else to get off before you could get on and use it. Even though they weren't in your house. They might have been down the street. So this song was born out of that. It's called Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. You don't have to wait on somebody else to get off the line because Jesus is on the main line. All you got to do is tell him what you want today. Amen? So I wonder, could we do that here this morning? Can we sing together? Well, it's Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh. Call him 
for. Amen. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. Whew. Are you thankful here this morning? Yes. Amen. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord and tell him how thankful you are. Amen. Amen. Yes. Whew. Wonder if we could get our ushers to come. We're getting ready to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Amen. We want God to move in this place. We want him to have his way. Amen. Just remember, the key is worship. I'm not talking about getting all crazy. But I am saying that he does deserve our very best. He deserves it all. Amen. He deserves it all today. Wonder Pastor, could you please pray and ask God to bless these people and bless these offerings here this morning?
Amen. He's our own time God. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. Why don't we just sing that? Amen. Praise God. Well, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. You got a problem you need him to fix? Yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He knows all about it. Job said he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there. The children of Israel this morning and you can be seated after you've greeted somebody amen elbow bumps are appropriate no fist no hand no handshaking maybe but I was reading you know it's interesting I love to read the the great chapter of faith in Hebrews anybody like that anybody like that like to read that do you know that exactly half plus one of them made miserable mistakes we're talking bad stuff my goodness you had David he had everything and here he was killing a man and taking his wife away from him trying to cover it up and yet he was in, he still made it to the book of faith the hall of fame faith brother Chris Darty. he still made it and we still sing all his songs. Well, good Lord, if somebody messed up today in our world, you know, I've heard of some 
some famous musicians and singers messing up. Well, we just don't even sing their songs because, you know, they just don't have it together. Well, you're singing songs from David from way back. What's, what's up with that? We have got to get to the place where we realize God uses failure for our good. He uses failure for our good. So if you came in here today feeling like a failure, guess what? Get in line. And it's a long one, let me tell you. And you'll have to get in line behind all of the ministry team. Get behind me. Lord of mercy. So if you came and if you're out there online, you're watching, you feel like you're a failure and God will never use you. Oh, I've heard him say, if I come in the door, the, the, it'll probably cave in on me because I've been so bad. You're not that powerful. I love you, but you're not that powerful. My God is bigger than your failures. Amen. So today, I wonder, can we ask the Lord to bless this word here today? He's al- Well, he's blessed his word already. It's been blessed. But can we ask him to bless it coming into our ears? Lord, don't let me twist it. God, don't let me twist it through my circumstance that I'm going through right now. And for Lord's sakes, God, don't let me twist your word through my past experiences because God knows I've been through so much and I might take that word wrong. But Lord, today, will you let me take the word for exactly how you mean it? Let the word penetrate my heart. Let it penetrate the walls around my spirit. Jesus, I pray, God, for a special, mighty, holy anointing to take over this man of God. In the name of Jesus, can you join me right now? Jesus, touch him. God, I pray, Lord, I know that you've given him a word today. And I pray, God, that it would, it would be unobstructed. Lord, that there would be no obstacles to that word coming forth. And, Lord, if there's a hard word that you need to give me today, let this man have the courage to say it. God, help me to change. Jesus, let that word go in and divide like that two-edged sword that it's supposed to be. Let me not want to hear soft things and easy words. But, Lord, speak to us in a powerful, mighty way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. change this cover don't it don't match my outfit my wife's teaching me about color coordination I'm starting to get better let me see if I can get this thing on black goes with everything In Jesus name don't listen to him amen good to see everybody today love and appreciate every one of you thank you for being here and worshiping with us so good to see our friends Joyce and Shannon in the back with their family I I regret to tell you no news but in my in my day no news is good news it's a little joke we've got between me and her no news yet yet that makes her feel better that little word yet Amen. How many feel good today? If I feel pretty good? How many feel funny? How many feel weird? Do. Sometimes I just feel weird sometimes. I'm not talking about God or the, the feeling I'm feeling in here. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about my, you know, we talk about our feelings sometimes that we don't worship because we feel funny or we feel different or whatever. I've tried to make it a point today that I, I've worshiped even though I feel just funny. Hey, I'm just being transparent. I guess nobody else feels funny every now and then. Amen. I want to to bring you the Word of God this morning. And I just want you to, I don't know if I'm going to preach, teach, or just talk. In fact, let me just talk for just a little bit today. How about that? Turn with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. Very uh, known passage of Scripture that we read a lot. 2 Kings chapter 4, 
Again, it's good to see everybody today. Love and appreciate you. 2 Kings chapter 4. <clears throat> and if you got it, say we got it. All right. It says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. As we read the rest of this, I want you to pay attention to the things that you usually wouldn't pay attention to. Verse 2, And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, thy, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. So she said, I've got a little oil in my house. That's it. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Say not a few. Say a lot. All right? When thou art come in, he's still giving her instruction. Thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shalt pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full so she went from him and shut the door upon her house and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil Stayed, or in other words, the oil stopped flowing. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil, pay the debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Amen? All right, I just want to talk to you for just a few minutes this morning on becoming a willing vessel. Is that all right? Becoming a willing vessel. Because, you know, if there's willing vessels, then there's unwilling vessels. Right? Now, I'm just going to talk. You don't have to get quiet, but I'm just going to talk today. Amen? All right, we've already prayed. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Prophet Elisha told the woman to go to the house, house to house, barring empty vessels. Anybody catch that? Empty vessels. And bar not a few. The scripture here is just one small instance of how God provided for them in the olden days and how God provides for us today. Now, let me make a disclaimer that, and I, I it, it, you know, it's, it's shameful that today in, in our uh, society that I need to make this disclaimer, but is in, anybody else ha ever thought, you know, why we have so many churches on every corner that preach different things? Anybody else out there? We've got millions of churches in the world, and everybody says our way's right. Ever thought about that? Warren, you ever thought about that before? A bunch of churches everywhere. But this person said this is right. This person said that's wrong, and this is right. Which, which, which one's right, really? Well, like I said, it's shameful for me to have to tell you, but I'm telling you the truth today, and you can go back it up, write, write down these scriptures. We'll go back and study, and we'll have a Bible study. We'll show you that this is, this is truth, and we'll, we'll read it in context. We'll let you read it. We'll have a Bible study together. Amen? All right? But when you read this scripture uh, specifically, I, I want to focus on something that we normally would just look over when reading this. The prophet Elijah told the woman to go gather vessels, and not only that, but empty vessels, and see that the, the miracle that occurred in this text was a direct result from what was offered to God to perform into. You just follow along. In other words, if the woman and her sons did not gather any vessels, Brother James, the miracle would have never taken place. So that tells me common sense says for God to perform something, he's got to have not only a vessel, but he's got to have an empty vessel. And we're moving a little fast today, but we'll, we'll get there, okay? He's got to have a vessel. 
Because the miracle that God performed on that day was a direct result from what the woman gathered and offered to the Lord to use. Somebody say amen. The miracle had two acting parts in its performance. God was the orchestrator of the miracle, but the woman who gathered the vessels opened up the door for God to perform. She gave God something to pour into because let me tell you something, God's not going to kick in your door. God's a gentleman. He sure is. He's not going to make you do anything if you don't want to do it. That's why he made us with the freedom of choice. We can choose to love him or not. We can choose to come to church. We can choose to want to live right. We can choose to worship. We can choose to read our Bible. We can choose to love. We sure can. We can choose to love people who don't love us. That's why he gave us the power of choice. We can choose to be the second acting part in God's performance. Some, some of us desire things from God even today. Some of us need healing. Amen? Need healing in our bodies, healing in our minds. Some of us need deliverance from addiction. Some of us need a, a renewed mind and heart that's got all kind of garbage and nasty thinking up here. And I mean, it, Hey, let's just get real for just a minute. Some of us have those problems. Some of us sit at home at night and we wonder, God, what's wrong with my mind? I just can't get it out of the gutter all the time. It's always in garbage and filth. We got to get real here. We got to stop playing this 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 play act of, of Christianity. We got to start being real with God. Let Him search your heart and show Him what's wrong. Why don't you tell Him in your prayers, God? You know, I don't I don't appreciate this that I'm doing to myself. I need you to help me, Lord. But you know, you got to pray to do that. But some of us desired. Desire renewed hearts and minds. Some of us need the Holy Ghost because the Bible says if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can't make it. Some of us need healed marriages. Some of us need healed relationships. And we have all these needs and desires, but we don't, we don't understand that what God wants to provide and perform is two-parted, not one. God orchestrates, but we've got to give him something to pour into. But God can't pour into something that's already filled with something else. That's why the prophet Elisha told the woman to, to go borrow empty vessels that you can pour into. See, God's not going to pour into anything that's already full of something. You can't. Even if he wanted to. He can't, and he's not going to. He's not going to dilute it with something else, and then the whole cup gets diluted with, with nastiness. Empty vessels. Romans 12 and 1, I talked to you Wednesday about this for those who were here and watching and listening. Romans 12 and 1, we talked about becoming a willing sacrifice. Paul told him in so many words that God can't pour into something that's not willing an already full vessel. He needs some, some willing and something that is empty to pour into. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And maybe you're understanding what I'm saying, but God cannot pour into us if we're full of ourselves, if we're full of other things that we've allowed to pour into us, other voices in our world, in society, on our job that's not right, that's not clean necessarily. Did you know that? Did you know we could allow things outside of here to speak into our lives, to pour into us? You don't think so. Go hang around somebody at your job that's got a specific personality that does certain things that maybe, maybe uh, uh, for instance, at my job when I first started there, everybody was amazed that I just, I don't use profanity. Why? No, I don't think I'm not better than you. I just don't use it. I don't prefer to use it. I don't think it's necessary. Everybody's amazed though. And I've watched some of friends and people that I've known before go work at the same place and within six months, they're cussing like a sailor just because everybody else is. So it's possible for things to pour into you that you allow them to pour into you. Right? 
And it may seem simple, but that, that, that's why for some of us, you haven't been able to receive the Holy Ghost or receive good direction or receive what, what need you have need of because you're already full of something else. It's common sense. You can't pour more water into a glass that's already full unless you're going to make a mess. God don't make messes. He makes miracles. But Paul said to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and what? Acceptable. What does that mean? He said to offer your, your bodies as a living sacrifice that's acceptable. See, when you give God something acceptable, it's giving him something that he can work with, something that can be accepted. If I ask my wife to go into the kitchen, Brother Warren, and grab me a glass so I could put some sweet tea in it, but she brings me a glass that's got Lysol in it. I can't accept that because that's not what I asked for. I asked for an empty glass that I can pour some sweet tea or some Diet Coke or some Coke or whatever into. But if it's already filled with something, see, this is very simplistic, but, you know, I, just, just, just keep listening. We'll get there in a minute, all right? But he said to give it your bodies as a living sacrifice that's holy and acceptable. So if, if, if a glass with, filled with Lysol is not acceptable, if I come to God and I'm full of myself and I'm full of pride and I'm full of all, a lot of nastiness and like I said a minute ago, some of us struggle with maybe our minds. We've got a lot of garbage in our minds and a lot of, a lot of debauchery, a lot of debris in our minds and we come to God and we're asking of something. God, I need something. We are tying God's hands to pour into us when we're already full of something else. I'll say it again. That's why the prophet Elijah told the lady to go get empty vessels. Vessels that were acceptable for them to pour into. Did you notice in the scripture that the prophet Elisha didn't perform or do anything in the part but give her instruction? So does that mean the preacher can do anything for you, anything of the miraculous? No. God does the work. We've been mandated as ministers of the gospel to show you what's truth and what's in the Bible. Unbiased opinion, what the Bible says in context that's been shown unto us by the Holy Ghost. And you do with the word what you like. He gave her instruction, and some of us, we get instruction from church, and we were like, well, I don't think that's necessary. Well, I, I didn't do that. And, you know, it's not, it's not anybody's place to tell me what I'm doing wrong in my life. Because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the head knocker in my house. Ain't nobody tell me what to do or how I need to do it, okay? But see, if we need something from God, see, I'm just talking today. If we need something from God, Brother James, we've got to give him something that's acceptable. Something acceptable is something willing to change. I just follow along. But if my wife, she, if, if Brother Warren, if somebody came to you and you know these little crock pots or these, what, what is that thing? What is the, uh, the air fryer? Air fryer. You like those things? Them air fryers? If somebody brought you an air fryer, Warren, and they had dinner in it from three months ago. <laughs> would you cook a crock pot in it? A crock pot roast or whatever? I wouldn't bother with it. I probably wouldn't even bother cleaning it out if it had dinner in it from three months ago. I, I pull one of my wife's d uh, little, little moves and I just chunk the whole thing in the garbage. She likes to do that. But I, I wouldn't even bother cleaning it because that's, that's, that's nasty. That ain't right. That's nasty, Tanner. I ain't put no food in that. We'll go to McDonald's. It's cheaper to go there and go buy a roast anyway and all the carrots and, and peas and everything to put in it. But if somebody gave you a crock pot and it had six months of dinner crammed in it and the lid put on and, and, and man, when you cracked the lid on that thing, it went pssst. 
It looked like it was balling, but it wasn't on. Maybe I'm the only one. Guess y'all don't have real families. But I wouldn't even bother cleaning it. It's humorous to think about, but God cannot and is unable to pour into something that's pure, pour something pure into something that's not pure. Something that's already full and something, something that's not willing to empty itself. That's why I said we offer our living bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. When we offer something acceptable to God, we've changed it out of what was unclean to something that was clean and he can pour into. Do we make ourselves perfect? No, because we'll never be perfect. But there, there, when you read the scripture, he just asks you to have faith, to repent of your old ways, to stop doing what you've been doing wrong. If you've been cussing up a storm, do your best to stop cussing. If you've been doing dirty deeds to your family and your friends, stop doing it to the best of your ability without making excuses and offer yourself as an acceptable sacrifice unto God. God, I've got some needs and I've shown you that I've tried to change, God, and I'm giving you something to pour into. That's all he's asking you for. He just wants you to clean yourself up a little bit where he can pour into you. Somebody say amen. Amen. The woman in Kings 4 offered the prophet a bunch of dirty vessels that were already filled with dust and with water or garbage. Maybe a few of them had some dirty socks in it. God would have been unable to perform because he's looking something that is he's looking for something that is empty of itself. Something that's willing to present itself to be filled and allow him to pour into it. You don't go to McDonald's or Burger King and you go up to the, well, back when we used to go to, into restaurants, now everything's closed down for Corona. We used to go into restaurants and we'd go up to the drink machine and we'd have our little paper cup. If, if they gave us a cup that was already filled with something and we didn't tell them what we wanted to drink, I mean, you're probably going to either get a new cup or we're going to pour it out, rinse it out with a little water and pour it out in a little sink and get us what we want, right? But you've got to have an empty cup to get what you want. But if what you want ain't what God wants, you ain't going to have nothing in you but dirtiness and vileness. And that's where it leads to. You think, well, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing, but it's where it leads to. Pastors even said it before that that one can of beer is probably not too bad, but where that one can leads to is bad. Because the one can leads to two cans, and the two cans lead to three cans, and and then three cans don't do it anymore, Hunter. Right? You can attest to this. I mean, you, you got a testimony, sir. Three cans don't do it no more. Now we got to have a little shot of brown liquor with it. Then we start drinking a gallon of Smirnoff a week, and that don't do it. So now we got to take, what's that, an amitriptyline with it? Pop one of those because it, it's, it's, not, it's not affecting him. It's not working anymore, right? So we, we got to keep, it's where it leads to. You see where I'm going? It's where it leads to. So when you allow things to pour into your life that's not really right, not clean, not godly or righteous or holy or acceptable unto God, you might not be dirty as a pigsty when when they first start pouring into you, but you wait a couple months, a couple years, and it'll start affecting you. It will. What's in you will start coming out. What's that scripture that says, from abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks? Jesus said in Mark 2, 21, and I'm hurrying, that Mark 2, 21, that no man, listen to this, no man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. You know the patches we used to get? Iron on a patch and a little hole in your pants. He said, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. Watch this, okay? Here we go. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled. And the bottles will be marred, but new wine must be put into 
New bottles. A clean bottle, right? Warren, you like using that same old sippy cup, but you don't just go six months without washing it. It'll start growing stuff in it. You'll turn it up, take you a drink, and swallow something solid. You get, it. you clean it, right? Now this is so simplistic today, okay? But we 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 clean the glass to pour more drink into it. But he said, in other words, you don't you don't reach into the cabinet and you pour milk into a glass that's still dirty. Let me try it again. Those of you who know how to can food, am I canned food before? You got to boil the, yeah, you got to boil the, you put it in hot water and clean it. All. I, I really haven't been taught because I haven't applied myself to that, but I'm going to one day. Okay, we'll get there. But you got to clean the jars, right? If you don't clean the jars, when you pop the lid on there and it doesn't suck that lid down under pressure, it starts to grow stuff in it and it starts to build pressure. And it, the glass will break, right? That's why the Bible says in Mark 2 and 22 that you don't put new wine into an old bottle, else the, the glass be marred or be broken because it's not clean. It builds up bacteria and infection, and it busts the bottle. It's the same way with us. You try to pour God into a dirty glass or a dirty heart, it's not going to work. You'll be sadly mistaken. You'll walk out of the church saying, well, God didn't work. Yeah. No, God did not not work. It, it was you that didn't clean yourself or offer him something that was acceptable for him to pour into. We'll get there. Let me break it down. The word willing is interpreted as ready, eager, or prepared to do something. The word vessel is interpreted as a container for holding something, a tube or canal such as an artery in which blood is contained, conveyed, or circulated. And the Lord is looking for some vessels to pour into that are ready, that are eager, that are willing to contain something and circulate it. Circulate means to move or to pour, or to continuously flow. That's why Jesus said in John 14 that these works that I do shall ye do, and greater works than these shall you do if you'll give God something acceptable. If you'll do that, you can take what's circulating in you and you can pour it into somebody else. Now we'll get there. We offer God something acceptable to pour into. And once we've got it, we circulate it. We contain it like an artery that which blood flows back and forth to throughout the rest of the body. But see, we have a reoccurring problem that we face continually every day that we, we continually allow temporal things to pour into us. Because you know why? Because those things don't require us to be clean. Now let me just make a disclaimer because I feel this. God is not expecting you to come in here perfect. I'll say it again. We don't get right to come to church. We come to church to get right. God is not looking for some people to come in here and they've got it all going on. I, I, I'll be the first to tell you, I still don't have it all going on, but I'm, I'm excelling. I'm trying. I'm doing my best. I'm giving God something that's acceptable to pour into. I'm doing my very best. God's not expecting you to come in here and change this and move that and do all this in one day. It's a work in progress. But he says, if you'll just offer him something acceptable, something willing to change, if you're not willing to change, he's not going to waste his time to pour into you. But James, if you get somebody on the job that's not willing to learn what you're trying to teach him to do, because he knows everything, one of these young whippersnappers, knows everything in a, in a bag of chips, 
And you can't tell them nothing, brother daughter. You can't tell them how to run the saw right, otherwise you're going to get your fingers cut off. And you're going to be crying to me, Bo, get my finger, man, while they're taking me with the paramedics. Get my finger, put it on ice. If somebody is not willing to show that, hey, you know what? I'm willing to change what I, what I think I know about the sawmill so you can teach me and pour into me the knowledge that you've learned. Something ex- that's acceptable. Something willing to be poured into. And we'll get there. Jesus told the Samaritan woman, At Jacob's well in John 4, that the water you draw here, you'll have to draw again and again and again because it doesn't last. But he said that that, he said the temporal waters we allow to be poured into us will never satisfy or fill the void in us and the underlying desire in us to want to be full of something that's pure. I'll just be honest. I, I don't like. Be, I don't. I don't mind being transparent. Okay. Some of you who's been out there and you've you've sown your wild oats and you've experienced those things. Okay. You know, brother Darty, that that stuff that you whatever you were messed up in, that stuff never filled that void all the way. It did almost. It got real close, but it just didn't. It didn't quite do it. Hunter, all them nights when you were a teenager. And you'd go get drunk, slap out your mind. You'd wake up the next day, one, with a headache. And two, you were still empty. All that booze still didn't fill you up quite what you were, what, what you were needing. Them left-handed cigarettes will get you real far, but they won't get you quite far enough. That amitriptyline will get, take you all the way, buddy, almost, but not quite all the way. It doesn't quite fill the void that, that's in, that's this, that just wants to be full of something that's pure. Anybody felt that? Am I the only person that's felt that before? Anybody sat in their bedroom at night just wanting something that was right, that was pure, something that I couldn't mess up, something that I couldn't do, do wrong, or something I couldn't just whatever? Anybody else laid in bed tonight and cried yourself to sleep just because you, you just want something? That's full. That's filling. That satisfies the void that's in me for something that's pure. But Jesus told the woman in John 4 that he said, Whosoever drinks of the water that I give, watch what he says, shall never thirst. Never. But shall be in him a well springing up or flowing, circulating. Anybody hearing the Word of God this morning? Something that's flowing, something that's circulating in me. A well that's springing up into everlasting life. When something springs up, you can't contain it. It's like a water hose. You turn the water hose on, and and a powerful water hose that's got a good pump behind it, you try to hold it down, it just spray everywhere. You can't stop it from coming out. That means if I've got a well that's in me springing up into everlasting life, that means the people around me are going to get wet. Because there's something in me that's flowing, that's circulating, that's pure. Because I've offered him something acceptable, something that he can pour into. We'll get there in just a minute. Now, I want to show you something. Revelation 12 and verse 12. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. I'm aware of the time. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice. you got to catch this now. We're going to go fast. Ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, therefore rejoice, he said. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. I studied the Scripture, and the Bible says that I, I, I... looked up the word wrath, that the devil comes with wrath. I studied the scripture, and the Bible interprets that word as not anger or fierceness, but passion. The devil comes unto us with passion. Great, having great. He said having great wrath. 
for the devil has come unto you having great wrath. You reading this? See, I'm not lying to you. Great wrath. Go study it. It means great passion. Let me ask you today, does the devil have more passion than you do? And let, let, let me just get something out, out in the open too. Just because you wasn't born in church or you ain't been in church in the last nine months don't mean you can't be passionate for God. It don't matter if you ain't been to church in 20 years. That can change today. You can become something acceptable for God to pour into. But is the devil more passionate than, than we are? Because he's passionate about his purpose. But is he more passionate about his purpose than we are for the one who redeemed us? The word passion literally means a strong and barely controllable emotion. Something that you can't contain. You can't shove it into a bottle and put the cap on. It, it, it's barely controllable. Something that's inside. Some of you who have passions for things. Anybody got a passion? You don't have to raise your hand because I know it's embarrassing you. Shame. But anybody got a passion for it? You got a passion for music. I love music. I've always, I've always loved music. I, I, love, I love good music, whether it's this or that, it don't matter. I love all genres, it don't matter. I love music. I have a passion for music. I love playing instruments. I love getting around with people and playing and making music, especially to God. But that's a passion of mine. But a passion is something that you can barely control. I couldn't go a long time without playing. I couldn't go a long time without, you ask my wife, I listen to music every day. Almost all day if I could. All day long, I love listening to music. Because it's a passion of mine. I love music. But a passion is something you can't, you can barely control. And the Bible says that the devil is coming with, he has come with great passion for his purpose. He wants to take you out. He doesn't want you to change, Warren. He, don't want you to keep, he wants you to keep your glass dirty. So whenever anything else, whether it be God or anything, pours into you, it's diluted and it's nasty and it's, it's nastified all the good stuff. The devil don't want you to be clean. The devil don't want you to get right. The devil don't want you to start coming to church and try to live right and do right and act like you got some sense. The devil don't want you to do that. That's his purpose because he's got great passion for that. Passion flows out of you if you've got passion in you. You don't have to tell somebody who's passionate about God what time church starts for the tenth time. You don't have to remind someone who's passionate about being Christ-like to pray every day. Is it hard? Sure it is. But I'm sure it was hard when he was carrying the cross up Golgotha too. We don't like to hear that stuff. I don't like to hear it. My wife will preach to me and she'll be like, well, you know what? It wasn't hard for him to get nailed either. And I'm just like, nobody likes hearing that, but it's true. It's the truth, and we need to hear that because you know what? We don't have much time left. The Bible said there in Revelation 12 and 12 that the devil has come down unto you having great passion because he knows that he hath but a short time. You know who else got a short time? Go turn on the news. Turn on the news. Let me show you how to get passionate. I'm hurrying, but I need you to listen. Vessel, vessels that are passionate about emptying themselves of any debris will be allowed to be poured into and filled with Jesus. Let me hit it again. God is looking for some willing, empty vessels that are passionate about his purpose. Are we perfect? Are we going to read the Bible in three days and understand everything? No. I've been intimidated for years of reading the Bible. That's why I used to never read it, because I was intimidated. Now, I'll just be the only one, because nobody else is going to raise their hand. But I'll be the only one to say I was intimidated of this book. I didn't like reading it because I didn't understand it. It takes time to understand this thing. It does. And whether we understand it at the moment when God comes back, if we've presented ourselves as an acceptable sacrifice, something that he can pour into. The Bible even says that if we'll show God that we're willing, he will pour the knowledge of the scriptures into our brains, Brother Warren. 
There's plenty of stuff in this book that I don't understand, and it's intimidating, and I don't feel like reading it because I don't understand. We reject things we don't understand. We sure do. But if you'll give something God to pour into, he said, I'll give you the knowledge of the Scriptures. I'll allow it to become clear for you for you to understand if you'll just give me something to pour into. Somebody say amen. I'm hurrying. Let me show you how to get passionate. Verse 5 of our text in 2 Kings, just listen. says, so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons because her husband was dead. She had her family in the house, and she shut the door. And the Bible says, who brought the vessels upon unto her, her sons, and she poured out. We got to come to church, okay, because it's biblical. I have a Bible study another day. But relationship didn't start in the sanctuary, the temple in here. Relationship with God. See, that's a good thing. A lot of you don't want to lift your hands or pray in front of people because you just, you know, shame. You go home because that's where relationship starts. The Bible says that she went from him after she received instruction from the man of God. She went back into her house. She shut the door where nobody else could see. She gathered her family, and she started pouring out. Relationship starts at home. Men, mom, relationship with God starts at home. And let me just say this. You won't be able to have a good relationship with your spouse if you don't have a good relationship with God. God will allow We need to allow God to love our spouse through us. You might not understand that, but just remember that. We need to to allow him to pour into us so that it can flow, circulate and flow out of us into somebody else, whether it be your brother, your sister, somebody on the job, your spouse, having marital trouble. How much praying you've been doing? How many times you shut the door at your home and started pouring out with your family? Now, I'm fixing to nail it down. We, we just, let's just get here, okay? I'll be the first to admit that a part of me doesn't like praying in the same room with my, with my wife because it brings to the surface the shallowness of my prayer life. Oh, yeah. It'll bring things to the surface that you didn't realize you had until you got somewhere where somebody else could see your prayer life. And us men don't want to feel inferior. My wife ain't going to have no better prayer life than me. Well, you know how we fix that? We just don't pray together. <laughs> let, let me do what Sister Gleason does. Yes. But I, I'm, I'll be the first to stand and attest to you. I've done it before, thousands and thousands of times. But the Bible says that she took her, her and her sons in the house and shut the door. Her family. Men, dads, listen up. John 6 and verse 9. Men, dads, here we go. We preached on this not long ago. There is a lad here. Remember when Jesus fed, he fed the 5,000 and the many, many more? Did you know that the 5,000 were just men? What do you think? God, Jesus didn't, he didn't fill the rest of the people up. The women and children just starved and got hungry? No. Watch what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 10, we got to hurry. And Jesus said, make the. You ever wonder why he said that? Now, Sister Gleason's making jokes, but we're, we're being serious, okay? He said, make the men sit down. And watch what he says. Now, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. So he didn't feed just the 5,000. I'm fixing to show you. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were. Because men, it's your job to distribute. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. It's your job to distribute to your family. If your family and your spouse and your children is spiritually malnourished, you ain't got nobody to blame but yourself. 
It's biblical. We are the head of our household, or we're supposed to be, because we're the only thing. I'm telling you what. It, it, I'm, let me just I, give me time. Can I get 10 minutes? Maybe 10 minutes, and we'll try to hurry, okay? But there are some prayers. I'm, I'm not taking away from, from women or, or ladies, but biblically, we'll have a Bible study. There are some demons that daddy's got to fight. There's some things that come into our lives that men's got to stand up and say, all right now, that's about enough of this. Some good pure man that's willing to allow God to pour into because you can take that same water that's in you and you can destroy your enemy with that. You can drown them out. There's some things that men's just got to stand up and say, you know what, that's enough. Back when I was a child back in the day and I was acting up in the house, mother would say, you know what, she, now she'd take care of me. Now she'd, oh, she'd blister me. Good Lord. But she, she'd tell me at the end, you know, wait for your daddy to get home. And when she told me that, because I knew all he had to do, all he had to do, I probably got 10 spankings my whole life. He would come in and all he had to do is raise his voice. And I'm telling you, I would quake with fear. It was respect. Wasn't mean to me. He was teaching me. But there's sometimes that men and daddies got to stand up and say, that's enough. We are responsible men and dads to distribute the nourishment that we receive from God to our families, to our children. It's our responsibility. If they're spiritually malnourished, I'll say it again. They ain't nobody to blame but us. And that might be hard, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. I, I speak it with it as much love as I can. If you need help, call me. I'll pray with you. I'll Bible study with you. I'll help you. I'll teach you what I know, the little bit I do. But it was the man's job in that day to distribute to the rest of the family. And I'm closing Verse 6 of our text. You know, it's getting too close to judgment for us to care about how we look and how we sound, men, specifically. Because we're very prideful. That's natural. That's natural. We're very prideful, strong, emotionless. I am. But it's getting too close for us to for us to really care about how we look and how we sound in front of people, around people at church, or whether we pray at home. It's, 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 it's getting too close for us to really care what, what, how I sound in the same room as my wife praying. It don't matter how you sound. Teach your kids how to pray. Go home. You ain't got to do it here. They'll watch you here, but at home you can teach them, this is how we pray. This is why we pray. But to, to teach them that we've got to get the revelation of prayer. And I'm hurrying. I'm getting off my notes, but I heard it said the other day, and I shared it with you the other day, that secondhand revelation will always beget secondhand relationship. What does that mean? That means that if I have a relationship with my pastor who has a relationship with God, I'll have a second-hand relationship with God. Israel, the people of Israel, go study Exodus and all that. When they came out of Egypt, they wandered for years and years and years because they knew Moses and Moses knew God. The Israelites never made it a point to say, you know what, I, I think it's time for me to go pray. They always let Moses go into the mountain and pray. Moses was always the one to say, well, let me go and pray so I can get God off of y'all's tails because he's ready to kill all of y'all. Israelites never had relationship with God. And secondhand revelation or understanding, if you rely on your pastor's understanding or the ministry's understanding of the Word of God, you will never allow God to pour into you the knowledge of the Scripture that you need to know. Relationship. Stand with me. I'm hurrying. I'm going to share just a one more thing, okay? One more thing. 
verse 6. Okay, can we put that up? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 6. Here, we read it. Just listen, okay? And it came to pass when the vessels were full, Warren, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the Bible says the oil stayed or the flow stopped. When there is not a vessel available, God stops pouring. What does that mean? That means that God will pour into you however much you allow Him to pour into you. He's going to pour into us however much we offer Him to pour into. If we offer Him a little shot glass, He'll pour into the shot glass. He will. He sure will. And He'll fill it up. But after that's full, the oil stops. The oil stops. Jesus. Can I give you one last scripture? I've given you a lot today. But here's, here's, this is it, Brother James. This is it. No more. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. This is it. I'm, I'm getting off my notes. I'll turn it off. It's done. All right? I know we hurry. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Let's read it together. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal... The Lord knoweth them that are His, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you've heard pastor preach about it before, iniquity is self-ruled, the way I want to do things, right? That's the way I think is right, not what the Bible says, but what I know is right. What I think is right. What I think is okay. But he said to depart from iniquity. Basically, in other words, let's, I'll paraphrase. Clean yourself of everything that you know to be right. Amen. right. Next verse. Verse 20. We're going. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, which are pure. Because in order to make gold and silver right, it's got to be purified. Okay? But also of wood and of earth. And some to honor. And some to dishonor. There's vessels all the kind. There's dirty vessels. There's clean vessels. There's pure vessels. There's unpure vessels. Last verse, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself or push out of himself, get out of himself, purge, to get out himself from these, from the iniquity from what I think is right, Brother James. The uncleanness in me. I think that drinking three or four or five beers on a, on a Friday night and getting slapped drunk out of my mind is okay. Well, that's where it leads to, right? But he says, if you'll depart from that mindset and you'll purge out of you these, watch this, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Whew sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work he said if you'll purge out of you the things in you that are hindering me from pouring in you because God's ready he said a couple weeks ago I'm ready and I'm willing to pour but you've got to give me something to pour into you've got to purge yourself of what you think is right and your own mindset and he says, when you, you'll do that. Come on, let's lift our hands. He said, when you do that, he said, you'll be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the, that means I can be used by God. Come on now, let's receive the word of God. Let's lift our hands. Let's ask God right now in your own words, under your breath, however you want to do it. No looking around, everybody's eyes closed. Everybody close your eyes. Why don't you right now ask God, help me, Lord, to receive this word. Help me, that God, that I would be changed by this word. Help me today, Lord, that you would embed this word inside my heart. That I would never forget this, Lord. That you would always bring this back to remembrance. That I, I, I need to do some things. I need to clean some stuff up so you could pour into me, Lord. 
There's people in my families that I need to pour into. There's people in my community on my job that I need to pour into. Help me, Jesus. Come on. Why don't you just pray that prayer right now? Come on. In your own words. Help me, Jesus. Clean me up, Lord. If there's anything inside of me now, Lord, that's not clean, bring it to the surface so I can deal with it, Lord. If there's something in my lips, there's something in my mind that's not clean, rid me of it, God. Bring it to the surface and convict me of it. Change me, God. Come on, pray that prayer with me. If there's anything in me that's not right, Lord, it's unclean, Help me to wash it out, Lord. Help me to wash it out, Jesus. with us. Love of God. Pour into me, Jesus, and overflow, God. Not just a little bit, not just a few, but all of me. Continue to pray. Less of me, Jesus. I decrease so you can increase in me, Lord. Oh, I want to be right with you, God. provide the vessel for you to pour into. You pour out your spirit oh, and I will open up inside. Fill me up. Come on, so let's sing it now. Fill me thank him now for his word but let's let's clap our hands come on the bible says to clap your hands and to shout with a voice of triumph because we've won the victory 
I want to remind you as pastor comes to dismiss us that relationship started in the woman's home. You got off easy. You got to do it in front of nobody here. But go home. Get your family. Shut the door. And pray. If you don't know how to pray and you're embarrassed of that because maybe your kids are looking at going, Daddy, how do I pray? Mommy, how do I pray? Learn together. That's right. Yes. Learn together. You think we got it all together? You think we know all the words to say sometimes? You ain't got to say some eloquent whatever. Just pray. Be honest with God. He wants you to be honest with Him. Just talk to Him. You know, God, I got some problems with my mind. I got some problems with it with my heart. I got some some greed and some anger, some anger issues. Oh yeah, we have those too. I've got some fierceness in me that that wants to well up when people do me wrong. I need help with that, God. But it starts at home. Amen. Pastor, come dismiss us. Amen. You got to be willing. That's the whole idea. You got to be willing. Flow. You got to flow with him. You know, uh, this past week we went out of town for a few days. And Monday morning, I went to get in my truck. Switch is left on. Both both batteries as dead as a hammer. And if anybody knows anything about a, a diesel engine, it takes two batteries and they ain't cheap. So we got, I got frustrated at first because I had left the switch on Saturday night in my rush to get to the hospital with two kidney stones. And But then that little still small voice inside of me said, I'm delaying you from leaving right now. And so I went and told the kids, I said, you know what? God is delaying us because there's probably an accident or something could happen up the road. So you learn to let God work with you, flow with you, and all things work together for the good, the body of Christ. Always remember that. Get that relationship with him at home, and you'll know where... God will lead you. So I just went, got two more batteries, put them in there. And we were on our way safely. It was uneventful, but I believe God's hands was in the whole thing. So you remember, he'll lead you like that. I love all of you. We'll be back here Wednesday night for the five love languages. Love as, love as the second, as your second language. Amen. And it's going to continue. So remember... If I want one, one of the things that I guess disturbs me a little bit sometimes as a pastor is we should be reproducing. If God's pouring into us like He should be, then we should overflow and we should be pouring into other people's lives, and then they should be pouring into other people's lives. In other words, if, if, if you've been coming to this church a year, you should have, I would say you should have won at least one person to the Lord. But if you've been coming 10 years and had won nobody, so this week, make up your mind, I'm going to win somebody. Isn't that right? I'm going to find somebody and I'm going to bring them to church. They aggravate and I know. Because they start calling your phone and they got all kind of problems and all this going on and they fussing and you know and, but you got to work with them I mean because at one time we were just like that remember the Bible says such were some of you you know so we've got to reach for them and help them and lead them and guide them and teach them how to love one another so I want to see y'all get your eyes set on somebody and bring them to church 
Bring them Wednesday night, okay? You've got two couple of days to work on it. So let's get to work on our outreach. That's what we live for, right? To reach other people. That's for sure. How many's got a need? I want you to raise your hand. God knows these needs. We're asking by faith. Amen. Don't forget, be back here Wednesday, 630 for prayer, 7 o'clock. Five love languages. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We hear you, Lord, that we need to open ourselves up. We need to empty ourselves of self so that you can fill us, Lord, that we can be that vessel that overflows, that living water that flows to all that's around in my world, Lord, that I come in contact with. Lord, let me be a light to all that are in the room, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, you'll open my understanding, Lord. I, you know the needs that are here in the house, Lord. You've seen the hands that were raised. Lord, I pray, God, you'd bless each and every one of them, Lord. I pray, God, that we could double our attendance this year, Lord, before this year's up. We believe in, Lord, for your souls, oh God, that you're going to lead us to hungry people, Lord, that want to hear the truth, that want to be poured into vessels, Lord, that are acceptable. Lord, we give you the honor, the praise, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. Lord bless you. You're dismissed. We have music practice at 4 o'clock. All the musicians, singers. Four o'clock, please.